143 hole in ones. That's what we're getting into today. Before I go anywhere, I just wanted to say a big thanks to the people who have put out footage of hole in ones before me, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do this without them. So big thanks to the Walkabout Mini Golf Discord and the Hole in One and Trick Shots channel there. If you're not in there, definitely get in. And to other YouTube creators such as Virtually Ben, Ginger Joey, and Inner Princess, they're putting out some great stuff. So a big thanks to y'all. Kind of combined all the powers of the masters to make these hole in ones myself. If you like this video, definitely consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you like competing in VR sports stuff, join the Discord. I host monthly tournaments with payouts. So definitely worth your time, I think, if you like that stuff. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, y'all. We're hopping in the Tourist Trap, which is going to be um, the first of eight courses. We're going from front to back all the way to the eighth course, which is the last course in the base game, which is Quixote Valley. So I think that's like 144 holes in total. There is one that's impossible, but we'll get to that when the time comes. At least so far, it's been proven impossible um, for humans. These first couple here that you're gonna be hitting in Tourist Trap are just straight on, nice and easy. Uh, most of the ones in Tourist Trap, you're gonna wanna go for anyway in match play, um, just because they're relatively easy or there's they're low risk if you do. Um, there's a few exceptions, which I'll get to. They, Really, hole in ones um, across these eight courses that I've done so far have kind of fallen into three categories, which is like the first three are easy, medium, hard, but like you would go for them in a match probably. The hard ones you might have to think about, well, maybe I want to hedge bets. The last two levels that I'm calling it are like the insanity tier, which are ones that you're probably not going to go for and they're only worth it if you're behind or really just going against like an ace player that you don't feel like you could beat um, without it. And so th those are the ones that you're doing a crazy play. Um, you're either doing a crazy play and you are hope and you are just waiting for you to do it correctly, or you're doing a crazy play and you're waiting for a really lucky bounce or combination of lucky bounces. In this case, this is hard. I would consider this hard, which is just, you're gonna hit there anyway. Like that's where you're gonna hit. But getting this like special bounce that I got is going to take a really long time. For the, me, it took like three to four hours, I think. It might have been a little longer um, to get that shot in on hole four. So it's just one of those things you wanna you wanna go for anyway. It's okay if you miss. Usually, if you miss, you just get an easy follow up putt. No big deal. Here, you wanna go if you're going for the hole in one. You need the hole in one. Go to the left side. Just a nice, nice medium, medium strength shot. Hole six, I actually didn't mean to go here. There's a rock to the left of this that puts you in a much better position should you hit it. But I just missed it a little bit to the right and just got really, really lucky with a, a lucky bounce off the, the right edge of that. So um, sometimes, sometimes, man, you go for hole in ones, you just get lucky. There are, there are probably five to ten ones that I've done totally different than every other YouTuber Discord member um, has done them. Um, and most of the time, not intentionally. Seven, this was a hell of a shot. Definitely do not go for this in a match. Um, just just trust your trust your long putt game um, to be able to finish this one off in two. Uh, this one took me four or five hours of just bouncing back and forth. You can go either side here on the rocks and get a get a bounce that gives you an iota of a chance of getting in but heck of a shot man heck of a shot took a long time the only reason why this one's not sustainable during match play is right at the end that last bounce before it goes on the green there's a lot of variable as to which uh, whether it will either fall through or more likely it will bounce in between the steps and the green and it'll send it backwards or to the right hole nine piece of cake easy just go straight on hole 10 is a bit interesting in the way that i went for the shot that most pros don't go for and this one's the one that's like obvious like you're like oh i'm definitely going to go for this um, when you're playing it because it gives you an easy second putt 
But the higher percentage hole in one is actually to go just a little bit to the left of that and then get a really nice set of um, wall bounces and you'll be in a, a great spot. You just need to learn how to tame your power down a bit. I'm kind of embarrassed at how long hole 11 took me. It's legitimately just a straight shot, but I hit, I either hit the cup and like launched off to the right or the left a little bit multiple times. Uh, but this is like, it's this one hole 18 on Arizona Easy, and there's a couple others that were just like embarrassing that I could not hit straight on. This one I finally got. Just that human error, man. Just a little bit. This one, you want to go on the left side of that funnel right before it changes to like the parallel planks going down. So you want to hit just a little bit to the left of where you're standing and up. Hit it soft enough so that it doesn't go too far. And then you'll just, you'll catch the edge of that funnel, which you'll see here. And then your hope is that it hits the cup and comes right back. A lot of the times, man, a lot of the times you're going to hit that cup and it's not going to come back. Just get, just get used to that if that's what you're going for. This one, everyone kind of hits a lot, slightly different spot and that's just because it's, you can do it with anything. You kind of want to hit within, I'd say three to four planks, plus minus three or four planks to where I hit. Um, I mean, I think realistically you could do it with any plank if you timed it well, but for just a good straight shot, you hit that, hit it slow enough so that it'll come over and just tap that. Um, that left side This one now despite the fact that I couldn't hit uh, Oh god, what was the whole whole 11 um, straight this one? I think I got pretty quickly. I think I got it within like 10 minutes or so um, Maybe even sooner But nice straight shot here Nothing too crazy going on I did I, I realize this now I uh this is one of the first holes or first um, courses that I recorded when I was doing this, and I definitely meant to on the holes that I got pretend to like transition to the next hole so that this edit would be seamless. And I guarantee you that after probably this one in Cherry Blossom, I did not, I did not change that, um, or I did change that and did not <laughs> did not do that transition. This one, you want to go for the kind of that multicolored block right there. You just want to do that in general. Good for this. This one I got first try. Very easy. I think a lot of people get first try here. This may be one of the first hole-in-ones that people really hit when they play the game. Very easy. The, the donut shape forgiving and allows you to come back in to the hole. Seventeen is a bit of an odd one for if you haven't played a course in a while. So if you're going at it from a tournament match play, this one's more important on power than it is on angle or anything like that. What I do is I do aim at the second from the right little plank sticking up and then just hit kind of a medium hard shot um, just so it goes over and usually even in the tournament. See if that had gone past, it would have probably gone halfway to the wall, which would have been a very desirable putt. This one, I can't, sometimes I look at this, I'm like, there's no way I hit this. But it, it's a, you know, it's a 70 foot jumper, just right from the top of the mountain. Um, at the very end of this, I'll go back and show the little angles and lines on the mountaintop just to show where I was aiming. You can aim there and you can just hit like a millimeter right or left and it will go off in so many different directions just because of how like distant this hole is. Um, some people get this through bouncing, um, but the bouncing is really tough and it tends to go to the right of the hole when you're coming at it. Um, so I don't know if I would suggest that. I, I think in, in tournament play you absolutely do, because you can do it kind of consistently if you practice um, to get the bounces down. But yeah, here's the angles. There you go. All right, now we're into Cherry Blossom. So this one um, is the easiest one. Uh, this is the first uh, total 18 holes that I completed. And I, I did go through and do kind of like all the easy and medium ones first. So the fact that I finished this one first, I think is a pretty good indicator of its difficulty as a course. Really, you only have 
One that you're really hoping for very lucky bounces on. Um, the other you're just kind of hoping for general direction to be correct, and that's hole 10. Um, so this one's this one's pretty good. If you ever want to put together a video or something like that, this is this is one you can get all of them on in. I'd say like a like a 10 hour, 10 hour, 12 hour total time spent. Um, it's it's very reasonable. Most of these you're gonna try during match play. Um, I would actually change this one's tough because it's easier to get the hole in one if you go a bit harder like I did. Um, but if you were in tournament, you might want to go softer so you get an easy second putt. Depends on your risk level. This one's interesting because there's two ways. You can either go off that rock back there um, and you just get a nice bounce off the sand. I, for a long time, was going for one where you leave leave onto the sand and just barely bounce up to the right, and it just was not working. I couldn't get anywhere close. People do it, so I'm sure it's not unrealistic. But um, I found the rock to be much more consistent for the hope of a hole in one. I probably wouldn't go for it in match, but I think it has actually viability for it. I obviously got lost here. My bad, guys. There I am. Just a nice little knock on that right side uh, right before you get on the ramp is going to give you a, a, a nice direction for it. Otherwise, having the speed at that angle is just very tough. For this one, the hole in one is a little easier if you go for the lower percentage shot, which is that straightaway. If I'm in tournament here, you can still get the hole in one if you bounce over to the left. But bouncing over to the left gives you that whole entire gap to make it. So you have a much, like, uh, you have a higher percent chance of actually getting really close to the hole. So um, keep that in mind if you're looking at this for match play. No matter what, if you're on hole seven, of cherry blossom go as far up there as you can because if you bounce off the left and right that's going to give you kind of a, a left and right bound for the ball to come down on and it's moving so slow left to right at that point that you're almost guaranteed to at least get very very close and at least on the area you want so you can play it this was this is one of the first ones that i learned that was a bit cheeky uh, a bit cheeky, like it's it's a very fun little uh, collection of hits. Just go off there to the left side a little bit before the ramp, and it'll take you down. I think I spent too long on this. I think I, I was trying too many new things. Um, I tried going to the left side a bit, just didn't work. Stick with uh, st stick stick with what we know. That works well. Hole 9 was one of the first ones I think I got a hole in one on whenever I started playing the game. Um, probably not the first time I played it, but I think second or third time that I played on Cherry Blossom, I sunk this hole in one. It just felt, feels good. It feels good to sink the hole in ones on these. Um, this one, this one was great. This is this is the second hardest one on this course I think personally. Um, you can get pretty consistently down to the green, and I think a lot of people are going to go for that in match play. Um, you just go off to the left side, hit the rim, or uh, like the edge coming off that's elevated, and then you just kind of hope and pray. The only problem is on that, that bounce right before it entered, it is sloped a little bit not in your favor because it, it's going to go kind of heavily down and to the left. So you can get messed up there if you're doing it in a tournament. So maybe try to hit it down only to the um, second closest green giving you a tough second shot, but at least it's a viable second shot instead of having to go for a hole-in-one from the top. This one, if I was in tournament play, I would not be going for the very light hit that I did at the front. So you'll see it hits, and it's going to hit in front of the frame and then roll over. I would be worried about it actually hitting the frame and bouncing into the water in tournament play, so I would just go over and hope for the bounce off of the back end the problem with going to the back is you're you're making your hopefully straight on shot require that it remains straight on for a longer period of time than if you do the short one. So it's just a higher percentage shot for random hole in one if you do short. But in tournament play, I'd go long. This one's easy. A little bit to the right. Nice medium shot. Piece of cake.
Hole. Hole 14. Oh, hole 14, my bad. Hole 14 um, actually kind of shocked me a bit. I, I didn't think. I sunk this fairly quickly, like first five or seven shots. I, have, I had never gotten a hole in one on this before. I was very surprised that it just gave it to me. Um, that is kind of a theme that runs across this game is the the leaving from the pipes is dramatically different and sometimes it just sometimes it just works in your favor sometimes it doesn't this one always reminds me of whataburger if you're not in the american south then um you may not know what i'm talking about but it's a fast food chain fast food burger chain and that that looks exactly like the whataburger emblem so i could really go with the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich right now to be honest This one's a fun one. I I really enjoy learning this one because it's so useful for in the game as well. You just line it up, you go all the way down, you hit the last, or like second to last bamboo piece. Yeah, second to last right there. And then if you get lucky and you go to the left, good chance of a hole in one. If you go to the right, then you are, you are set up for an almost guaranteed second shot. So this one, this one's worth learning for everybody. gorgeous I apparently got a lot of angles here wanted to show off the bamboo if you're watching this and you miss this in tournament I'm gonna be very upset with you very upset this one I think hole in 17 I uh yeah I was in a match I was in a match with somebody and I hit it this was when I was actually recording for the hole in ones so I went ahead and got it Aido's my editor actually so we'll probably put something snarky here if he hears it. So this one, you're going off a crack on the back. This is the hardest one um, where you're really just hoping that it works. Um, but the fact that it's the only one makes this course uh, so nice to get all the hole-in-ones in. Um, actually, most people seem to go over to the left side and get a lucky bounce over there. I didn't even, this isn't what I was aiming for, but that just right to the right of that cracks where you get the best bounce and the most chaos. And a lot of these really hard ones require chaos. All right, now we're heading into Seagull Stacks. Seagull Stacks is a bit interesting because all of the rock formations around the hole are just a little bit different, which means you don't get a consistent hit off of it like you do in Cherry Blossom or a couple of the other ones. Um, so, it actually provides itself with a way of getting hole in ones much easier. Like if this was all flat, I think getting a hole in one on some of these would be much more difficult. But it does make some of them very, very hard. So I think hole six, hole 13, hole 15, they were the banes of my existence. Hole 13 is my second least favorite out of all the ones that I did, um, the other one's Arizona Modern 11, um, and yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get to that, all right? I don't know why I was excited to hit this. It's really not that hard of a, a hole-in-one, but apparently I was stoked. Look at me, look at me, look at me in my little hat. So excited, so thrilled. It was a barely, it was a barely. Now this one's a little deceitful. Because you think you can go on that like flat wall back there, but it's actually not a flat wall. It's pointing very slightly away from the hole. So if you hit it, you're always just going to go over to when you're facing the course, the right side. Um, so you kind of have to get a double bounce here to get the angle that you want. This one I got in like the first three shots. Very easy, very simple. Just a little bit to the left of the hole and it'll figure everything else out for you. If it doesn't, you'll be really, really close for the follow-up shot. Nothing special to see here. This is one of the ones that was really tough. I started out doing the thing that Froman does in the Discord, which is on the right side of that like furnace, stove, chimney stack thing. Um, you just slam the absolute crap out of it, and you just, you know, you hope you get a good bounce there, um, and it seems to send it generally towards the hole. However, I was looking at Virtually Ben and Ginger Joey, and uh, they use this left side one where you go to kind of an off-colored stone. It's a very difficult shot to hit because you're threading a needle between that left rock 
and the right rock um, next to the chimney. So, well, it's the left of the chimney. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Right there. You're aiming right there. Very tight shot. And I was just getting closer to the hole in general. So I would suggest using that one. Just up to you. This one I got, I think I got pretty lucky on. Um, I This is a shot that you could use in a tournament if you were down um, a good bit. Because you have a chance of getting a hole in one, you're going to get close. Um, but if you don't need a chance at a hole in one, then I would stay off of it and just go kind of up the center there um, to the right of the hole. This one is deceptively difficult. You look at it and you're like, all right, this would be easy. Problem is, if you go on the left side, you go up the hill and then roll down, you're going a little too fast for it to stay in. And so usually it'll pop out or pop around the hole, um, leaving you with the second shot, which isn't good for a hole-in-one video. So really, I was just going for a lucky bounce on one of those stones, and it worked out. Hole nine's pretty easy peasy. You want a nice clean middle of the road shot that'll figure itself out for you. Nothing too special. Look at that magnificent man. Oh, is this my gun? Oh, shoot. Y'all didn't hear that. I don't know why I thought I needed so many angles of this one. It's not too complex. <laughs> This one was fun. This one was fun. I, there's a couple ways. You can kind of go to the left there off of the um, first divot. I don't, I don't know if it's a divot, little little inlet of the stones. Um, and you might can get a nice little bounce out of the water. But doing this bounce back here was just the most effective way. I'm really surprised that I got that strong of a bounce um, out of it out of the water. The water seemed like it would hold the ball a lot more, but hey, I'm not complaining. This one's pretty easy. You'll probably want to do this in match anyway. Just bounce it over, but don't bounce it so far that it'll go over the very end of the course. Uh, it's pretty easy to map. I think for 11 and 12, these are two holes that are very good for you to learn how to bounce the ball appropriately because you can just use that skill to benefit yourself especially in a lot of the dlc courses now a lot of the dlc courses um you can use bouncing to your advantage so i would suggest it oh hole 13 my arch nemesis i spent so long on this you can't even see my real my real full pop off that I did I was ecstatic and the thing is I was I, I tried everything so there's like there's probably three different recorded ways to do this and I don't think anyone has a recording hitting off this stone I like it was just so hard um, I think at this point I was just I was just throwing whatever I could out there going for chaos and it just worked I mean this one was, this is probably six seven hours in um, you can go on the left or right side of the rocks and get a good shot. You can pop it up um, to the right side behind you. But man, it's a lot. It was it was a lot. This one this one you just hit down to that bottom step and get a little bounce there, um, and you just hope you just hope and pray, and it'll eventually show up. This one, man, I am surprised that I got it in the time I did. It is annoying to go for because of how much turning you have to do. You're going for the rock behind you that I hit, um, and you're just bouncing over there. Usually you're gonna get a turn that you don't wanna go, that you don't wanna get, um, just because of all of the rocks and grass around. So, good luck on this one, it's a, it's a tough one. Hole 16. This is this is like hole 16 in uh, Tourist Trap. Very easy, very simple. It requires a bit more precision in regards to hitting it straight, um, but you can go a little bit to the left of it, and it will still, because of the burst curve, it will still come to the right. So if you're going to aim anywhere, I would say aim to like the left center of the cup, and that's going to give you the highest chance of actually sinking it as a hole in one in game. This one, this one's fun. I, I like I like this one because it's just all about perfect power, perfect angle, 
and that's what you need. So I aim um, up there for that set of rocks. You're saying, Josh, which set of rocks? Those sets of rocks. No further questions. Does this look like a rubber ducky to you? I think it looks like a rubber ducky to me. Like a Cyclops rubber ducky. This one's fun. I, I think this one's good. I This is actually, this is one of the ones that goes between hard and the insanity easy. Because you can do this, not the hole in one, but you can do this fairly consistently where you get over to the other side. All right, so we're starting in to Arizona Modern. Um, this is, some of the things are, are easy um, and the ones that aren't suck. That's really the take. <laughs> That's to complete the whole thing. Um, there, this is where the impossible hole is. Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. So, uh, with that one, you just want to go to the right side, and you just kind of hope you get a nice little bounce off there. This is this one right here on hole two. You're gonna want to go for this anyway in tournament. It is gonna be the closest thing. You're gonna have a chance at a hole uh, a hole in one. If not, you got a decent a decent putt for the second one because you will you will be probably all the way to the wall. You're just hoping for a bounce off that right side wall. Oh, I accidentally, I probably accidentally hit Y, didn't I? Yeah, I was like, where did, that, where did the ball go? Did I not make this? This one, if you are in a match, my suggestion to you is to go a little bit to the left of the hole. Because if you go too hard on accident, you can catch the stairs up there. And they'll walk you back down. So, just a little bit left of the hole is where you want to aim. And you'll be fine. It is well worth going for this, because even if you're a little short, you have a good chance of bouncing up to the circle as well. Hole four was a bit tough. I actually, this so the way this lands is not one that's recorded, at least to my knowledge. Um, usually what you're doing is you're hitting exactly where I was, but the goal is to go up to the right side. You can see I'm, you can see I'm fairly thrilled. Um, you, you can go up to the, the right canyon wall, and it'll kind of bounce you back down, and you'll get pretty close most of the time. Um, I just got a really lucky bounce here um, off of a rock, so you, you can't, it, it would be difficult to replicate this um, in, in in any attempts. It would be very difficult, unless you're probably Chi Chi. So, hole five coming up. This is the one that's impossible. No one has proven that they can do this one yet. Um, it is completely circular. Uh, a couple, a few people have pulled off a couple of glitchy wall bounces that have allowed them to get relatively close. I I think I've gotten into the second ring like once or twice in my attempts, and then I gave up. It just it was it's really not not possible, um, at least so far. I hope one day somebody like emulates it and then figures out an exact spot to go for. Um, and then someone just spends hours grinding on it. Uh, that person will not be me, probably. So, this is the one. Don't waste your time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's not all of them. Heading into six, though. Six is a bit interesting in that you, you want to go for what I'm going to go for. Um, but you, you don't you can make it easier for yourself in match play. Because you'll see what I go for here. Oh wait, hole six is not what I was thinking. Never mind, scratch that. Hole six is very easy. You can get this in game absolutely. Um, the only problem is if you go a little bit too far, um, you're in trouble, but you could always end up in it with a line still. You just bounce off just a little bit on the right side of that pole, go up, nice medium shot will take you. Hole seven, hole seven is the one that I was thinking of, sorry. You're gonna to wanna to go for this. The one thing that you do for the hole in one is you wanna click right at the edge of that first right circle. And if you go for that, then it will be a little chancy. You might accidentally stay in your circle. Um, so you could hit it a little bit more outward, kind of like perpendicular to where you are um, when you start and you'll be able to set up for a second shot. For this one, people have gotten it in other ways, but the most consistent thing that seems to be what people do is just hit off the very edge of that 
of that corner and then you just wait you just wait till it works it won't work for the first 80 times and then it'll work later down the road this one took me a surprisingly long amount of time but I got really lucky here usually what you do is you just go beyond that you hit that and hope you get a, a roll off of the fence but for some reason I got a, a janky bounce on the edge of that and it just came back perfectly. So if you get frustrated with going for the normal shot, this is an option if you get used to it. You can actually hit it. You might even can dunk it. That'd be really interesting. Seeing a dunk on this one would be cool. Hole 10 not too bad and this is one you could go for in tournament. So I, I actually got it bouncing off a whole bunch of rocks. You don't need to do that. Like if you if you learn the angle, and I, I, I don't know the angle, I guess. I forgot that I, I did the bounce. But if you know the angle, it's very close to what I did. You can actually just pierce through both of those rocks and you get a shot at the hole in one. Um, so don't go for the bounce, go for that. So Hole 11, this is the only one out of the 143 that are possible that I was unable to get. Um, I got very close, and I'll show you some near misses after this, but I want to give a huge shout out to Froman who hit this clip. Thank you for letting me use your footage. Um, and just in general to the Walkabout Mini Golf Discord, uh, I couldn't have made this 142 that I did make without them. So thank you to them and uh, I'll show you some near misses here. They should be good. Basically, all you're doing is you're going for the right side. Um, you can go right or left, and you're just hoping for a janky hit off the edge. You have to have enough momentum that it comes down and doesn't take the circular curve. So you can see that's the closest one I got, and I actually got that like within the first 30 minutes. I got it, and I was like, dang, this is gonna be easy. Like This is gonna be no problem. And then I worked for about 10 to 12 hours, just never happened. I think this one hurt me the... Is this the one? Oh, no, no, no. There was one of them. I may not have captured it. Um, that really hurt my soul. Because it was just a random bounce off some terrain. And it almost went in. This one is tough. Um, because you have to aim for on the right side. That right circle. Um, that The thing that I hit the first time. There's a little slight color patch there. That looks different. You want to aim for that, hit like a medium hard, and then you just hope. You just hope. This one took me about four hours, three to four hours. So uh, definitely not one to to smirk at. This one's just straight on. Straight on with some nice bounces. Very easy, very simple. Nothing too advanced here. The rest of these are all fairly normal shots. They are not things that you have to be concerned about you can go for in game um, and as long as you're you're putting it generally in the right area you're gonna be okay so for this one you want to go about as far right as you can you can't go to the very edge because you will miss the the whole wall right there that I hit at the end um, so you need to hit just a little bit left to the right is that how you would say that left to the right you want to hit to the right and just hit left of the edge. I think that works better. This one I was surprised. The best way to hit the hole in one is to actually get a very slow drag. That way you get a very small amount of um, angle. I did not expect that. I figured that I was gonna have to go for a bounce on the other wall of this little tunnel. Um, but it's pretty easy. As long as you get a nice little slow one, you have a chance at it. And it, I mean, worst comes to worst, you bounce off and you land directly next to it so no issues there I honestly don't remember what 16 and 17 are oh 16 is the one where you go around the little loop and that one's not too bad I, I would say oh no it's this one dang <laughs> the half pipe this is this was my first no, never mind. I said it on the cherry blossom one and I was wrong this was my first hole in one in the game. I think this was my second course that I played. I was playing with Proto and Aido, who I play with on my uh, channel a decent amount. And it was my first shot. I remember it. I remember it because I was like, I'm a god. And then I realized it's probably very easy. 
This one is very easy to get close. Um, it was a bit harder to consistently get right next to the hole. I decided that going over to the left side gave me the best chance of doing it with the speed that I, I seemed to be hitting or was comfortable hitting at that time. So very easy on the left. This one took me an embarrassing amount of time to hit, but I finally got it. Uh, it's just a straight shot, but man, it is hard to hit straight for that long. Um, what you want to do is don't aim for the whole, just aim for like kind of the right, the, the, the leftish of that shadow and then just hit straight. Don't like don't don't look up at the hole each time. Like just look at that shadow and just keep swinging. It took me a long time to know that if you pull back on the trigger, um, or not the trigger, the control stick, then you reset the ball. So I was like going in and out of the menu each time to reset it. So if I had known that, this one probably would have taken a lot less time. But here we are. What a shot! What a shot! Oh, we're going for another angle. Why am I going for so many angles? I feel like I'm stalking somebody that's not there. Whoa. Oh, we reset it. Oh, there's so many angles. Oh, what is happening? That was not a clean angle. I don't know why I left this in. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. It got first try. First try. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at it. Look, all oh, the drop. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. Arizona Modern. One of the toughest ones. Wouldn't suggest it. All right. We are going into original Gothic for this one. This is probably, I would say it's the second easiest. If I think about it. Yeah, it's probably the second easiest. It has a couple that are pretty tough to do, um, which puts it above Cherry Blossom um, in difficulty. But... Honestly, these first these first couple, you just hit it straight on. You're in a good spot. And one of the big things about this one is this this may be one of the easier hole in ones because not only does it have it does it narrow the hallway, it also has a ramp on it. So I'm showing very very carefully. I was getting I was getting a little snarky that day. I don't know what I'm doing here. Why would I do? Oh look at that! Oh look at that! right there see and so you get to glance off that right side so even if you don't hit straight just like me you can make hole in ones beautiful absolutely gorgeous i was singing fallout boy before that and i think that's just because of the aesthetic of original gothic this one is surprisingly more difficult but you can get very close here by going for the same bounce just on that block, just a little bit up from the center, you can you can sink it. So right there, beautiful. Get the bounce back. It took me longer than I expected to it to take, for it to take, um, but it's very reasonable. It's something you want to go for um, in match as well. I think this one was actually a bit of a mistake because I usually was going for over the the stairs there, but I think I hit the stair and just let it let it play through, and I didn't really think about. The fact that I could roll all the way up that, and I, I think I just landed upon a gold mine um, that probably other people knew about before me. But it's a useful trick. So you can just go straight on, get a good bounce, um, and roll from there. That's what I would suggest. This one very, very simple. You want to, you can go up the ramp, get a full distance. This should usually be. A hole in one. They really, they really set you up for success here. Um, so as long as you're lucky and you're not bouncing around too much outside of that right corner that it puts you in, you're golden. This was probably a first try, honestly. The next one coming up is the hardest one. It's probably the reason why this one is harder than Cherry Blossom. But getting this bounce here is or at least for me, it was very, very difficult. Um, some people just go through the pipe and get it, but I, I worked on the pipe for three to four hours. Don't take that out of context, work on the pipe. You disgusting people. Um, but you just you just kind of flick it over there, um, and you just hope. You just hope. This one took the longest out of the whole thing. Um, and so... That's 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 what's gonna that's what's gonna stop you from 
want to do this one as a, as a full course. But it is possible. Um, you feel like you're getting better at it because it is a, it's, it's a difficult shot to hit in the first place. Um, and you can do a lot of variety to it. So it, it, it is possible and you don't feel like you're losing time when you do it. This one, you want to try to slow it down as much as possible and hit on that little like break in the concrete that I, I hit it in. You're going to miss a lot because it's just so many different ways that it can go and it has a very strong tendency to just go to the left of the stairs. So you can see right there, getting that bounce on the left of the stairs with enough power is crucial. And you are usually either jumping over that left side rail or you're going so fast against it that you are just following the, the curve, um, which means you're not gonna get what you want. Here, you wanna hit it just far enough where you can hit that wall over there um, to the right of the hole, because um, if you don't, you can't get like a straight line, and the tendency of this one is for you to loop around and hit kind of a straight line past it. Um, you know, looking at it now, you probably could get a straight line, but it has to be perfect. I actually wonder if that's possible. I bet it is. Oh, did I, not, I might not have recorded that one at the beginning. That was interesting. I don't know what happened there. But right here, you want to get a little bit of a bounce so it changes trajectory because it doesn't accept it without the bounce. Because if you just go past it, you're never going to hit it. Um, if you hit it too hard, you'll go beyond and fall off the edge. This one is only annoying because you have to come over here and check it every time and watch the ball eventually fall in the hole. Um, it's, it's not too bad. All ramps lead to the center, um, at least in some way. So that is, that is my suggestion. I'm obviously having trouble going through the crate. I, I promise that goes in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know uh, what I'm doing there. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Brilliant. Just right through. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you can see it went in right there. Let's see if we can see it fall. Oh, the bounce, the bounce. There it is. Beautiful. Oh, so it actually like kind of goes up there, and then boom, right in. I apparently did an awful job recording that for the 16 by 9 view, so my apologies on that. If you call me out, I will have proof that I made it in, so don't worry. <laughs> This one's, this one's tougher than it seems. You would think this one would have kind of a straight line, but it doesn't. Um, getting that line where it bounces off perfectly is tough. Usually it doesn't hit that very far wall to get the kind of throw back. So that one, expect to take some time. This one you're just going for, kind of an easy bounce there. Um, right over the top and then to land against it. The problem is, is with the concrete blocks raising and lowering, it's very difficult to time your jump, so be ex be expecting to uh, have to work on that. This one is fairly simple. Um, the only issue you have here is it's going very fast um, sometimes, and so for it to not just go directly past the cup is tough. So that one that one can be a little bit annoying at times, but it is doable. This one's very easy again. All roads kind of lead to home here. So it's not perfect. It's not going to send you into hole in one every time, but this is what you're going to do in the match anyway. It's going to be perfect. Just hit over to the left a little bit and hope that your bounce goes in. The next one coming up was one that I really struggled on on 15, uh, just because there was no real combination of wall bounces that I liked. Um, it, nothing would ever really get close to the hole it just kind of went past it all the time. So eventually I found this. I don't know if I invented this or if I watched somebody do it. I really don't remember. Um, I'm imagining I had, I had to watch somebody. I had to type this in to the walkabout discord and just found it. Um, but yeah, I just go, I just, I just go, I just go a little bit off that rock, get a beautiful roll in and it just goes right in. So I was, I was very excited about that because every, every type of hit around, you can get very close to the hole, but it is very difficult to get a hole in one. Nothing wants to go your way. This one's just nice and simple off the right side. You're going to do this anyway. 
You just gotta make sure that you hit it with enough speed that if it hits um, little divots in that, it's not going to make it bounce so much that it goes off. This is the other one with hole six that can be really tough. I actually almost messed this one up. I think I was very close to pulling back on the tri or on the uh, the analog stick. So this is when I actually knew about the analog stick, um, resetting the ball. And I think I pulled back and I held it, and I held it in place right then, like right when it hit the edge, because usually it's it's going away from it. it's never going to go back in. I held back on it. Um, and then I just I just stopped it and then I kind of twirled it around when I held until it made it in and I just kind of twirled it around like I was going forward um, and then was able to get the replay on it so there you go hole in one right there easy peasy beautiful hardest shot in the game right here guys Nah, just a nice medium shot there. You get in it every time. Piece of cake. Original Gothic, not too bad of a course. Second easiest one in my opinion. Um, you know, worth your time. Now going from Original Gothic, we are in Tethys Station. This is one of the coolest stages. I, I think I think everyone probably agrees that it's either this or um, Cherry Blossom is, is kind of top notch for why this this game is so special um outside of the, D the dlcs are incredible so dlcs are insane but for the first base games um these are them death station has a unique mixture of the five difficulties that we were talking about earlier um this one's really fun and something that is risky in tournament but can also reward you so if you hit off of that left side there um, as you're exiting the gap, you have a actually pretty good shot. Um, a really, really good shot of getting a hole in one. So it's worth it. Obviously, I am severely lost. I promise we're still on all two. There it is. Um, you hit off that, you hit off that left side and you just have a very, very good shot of getting a hole in one. Um, and if you don't, you end up with a very, very close shot. This is one of the difficult ones. Um, you just kind of have to get a little lucky with this. Um, so virtually Ben did it, um, I believe this way, and that's, or, or, yeah, I think he did it this way. Froman goes a little bit off to the right. Um, and I just, I couldn't make that work. I couldn't make that work. I wasn't getting what I wanted from it. Um, so I think I just really started wailing on it for, <laughs> For chaos, obviously going on that right side because I saw that it had some potential, um, and it just eventually worked out. This one, this one's gonna take a while. It's not gonna be easy. Uh, I would, I would suggest watching other people do it as well to figure out which one you like. Um, because knowing which one you like is important because you're gonna be trying that several times. This one is just really you just keep going until you get it right. You hit it down the center until the pipe says that you're allowed to do it. It's just got to go high enough on that ramp down there to um, slow down and allow itself to center it. And then once it rolls off, you're golden. Mine didn't even go to center. I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> mine, uh, mine, mine actually had a pretty lucky thing. This one's tough as well. Um, you can get you can get close, and in fact, a lot of the the extra bounces are very useful. Um, for if you're playing in a match. So if you go over here, like if you watch mine, I'll go to the left side um, and just get that nice bounce. If you just do that very softly where it won't bounce up and hit the Raptors above, um, then you'll usually get in a really nice spot for a long second putt, um, kind of guaranteed third putt situation. But this one's very difficult. This one's very difficult. You either hit it too hard or too soft most times, um, or you just hit off the Raptors and uh, doesn't end up well. I'm thinking now that I said raptors instead of rafters on that first thing, uh, there are not dinosaurs, uh, at least as far as I know, in Tetha Station. In Tetha Station Hard, you do look for eggs um, that look like dinosaur eggs. So I may have just been adding to the lore there. Look at that sick transition. 
This one took a little bit longer than you expect. It is, it is a, an easier shot, but getting the angle you want is a bit tough. You want to go just to the left of that center top bit. I would say I think it's the first dark ring outside of it. Let me make sure. Yeah, that just just on that first dark ring, and um, you just you you want to get all of your power from the roll off the hill. This one is one of the ones where I didn't really follow. Where where am I going? Okay, um, I didn't really follow the what most people do to get it in. Um, I, I did follow it for a while. Some people go on the right side and just hope for a lucky bounce. Um, and then the one, basically the same thing I did right there, which is go up the center. And the goal is to fall into one of those two middle ones. Uh, and then it'll, it'll kind of roll out and do it itself. This was just random luck, the chaos one. Um, so I would, I would suggest going up the middle personally, but go for a bounce in one of those middle two so that you get a nice roll. Because this, you're just, you're, you know, this is just, this is just chaos. That's just chaos. You don't want to, you don't want to go for that too much. This one, I always have trouble um, doing this in tournament. Um, I think it's a very valid shot in tournament as long as you hit the very, like the front of the purple circle. Uh, the problem is because of the direction you're going at, you kind of have to hit it. You either have to get a lucky bounce like I did here or you have to hit it kind of perfectly straight so that it, it bounces up. This is one of the easier ones. You just go off the left side, get a nice bounce up. This one you're probably gonna wanna do in tournament. Only thing you have to be careful of is not to hit it too hard so that you launch yourself off of the first ramp and out of the green. This one's easy. Whole 10's easy peasy. You just launch it right in there. Um, I honestly find that easier than going off of the right power pad, uh, but there is risk in doing this. You have a you have a slightly lower chance of making it in, and there's a bit of concern for. Am I am I trying to stand? I think I tried to stand, and that did not work. Boom, drained it. That one is pretty cool. I like this one on the hard stage. So this one I just had to drain. Um, a lot of people go on the right side there and bounce off of the wall um, so that it's kind of like a slow drop down. Um, I was just having I was just having difficulties with it um, and I just thought, you know what? I hit hole 18 on tourist trap. So I might as well do this. Hole 12, I think maybe the one that I spent the most time on whenever I was in here um, or in Tetha station. It just, the, the difficulty is, is once you get down into that little, uh, is it hexagon? Hexagon. None of the walls lead to the hole. So you really need to dunk it. And so going off that left side, you just want to hit it perfect power so that you get a little bounce over and you can drain it. This one I got first try. I got this one first try and I was very excited because I thought that I was going to be here for a while, at least like 30 minutes or something, just hoping that it goes in. Um, but man, first for first try, um, got it in, made my life a lot easier. This one's a bit tough and I, I definitely got it in a unique way, um, going off that little edge. Um, I wouldn't say unique, you do, you do kind of want to do that. You want to hit like this so it slows down and if you can stop before that you get past that, like that very edge that I hit, that's where you have the highest chance of making it in. It's really just a percentage shot. It's probably a pretty valid move in tournament, but would be very difficult. All right, you can see here, I'm aiming kind of almost just a little bit to the right of center and just trying to hit it directly. I'm not trying to deal with the slope. I'm trying to use the slope to launch me and um, it works out really well. This is one I would go for in tournament. I think it's higher percentage than going for the slope around. Uh, and it gives you a little closer. Give you a nice second shot. Hole 16 is pretty easy. I think this is one of the first ones where people are like, oh, I'm gonna circumvent the, the designed path and go for the harder shot whenever they first play. Um, so this one's very, very simple. Just get it right over. You just gotta time the fans right so that you don't hit them. This one is a bit tough because you have to deal with a couple of factors. One, you don't have like a perfect um, like triangular or flat surface to go off of. You're going off of the center. So you have to kind of make it 
a flat surface in a way. So you want to go kind of just, just right of center. I believe it is, but you need to hit it soft enough that you can use the slope of that very end bridge to turn it back towards the hole. Um, it, it is one of the more difficult ones, but you can do it. This one's pretty easy. You want to go, basically what you're going for here is the left side of the minus one. That's what you want because that's going to give you the most power to get around again. Um, I was kind of surprised that it came back for that one because I hit it on the center. But I hit enough power on it that it, it kind of powered through. A very, a very simple one. You should be able to always get at least like a two for here. Um, but getting the getting the hole in one is um, is is very easy, and you're always going to go for it in tournament anyway. So that's at the station. All right, and so now we're going into Bogey's Bonanza, Space Cowboys. Um, on here, you it looks like you know the the route the game wants you to take is over to the right side, um, where the sand is, uh, and that is that's that's a good spot. It'll it'll make it easy to go. But if you want to go for the hole in one or go for just an easier second shot, then you can bounce on the right plank over there and get it. This one actually didn't take me that long. I was surprised uh, that it it uh, happened so fast. So you go to the left of the barrel, which is a bit backward from what you might think. Um, the only danger there is that you um, go over that set of planks that you hit past the barrel. Um, so you have to hit a very kind of specific spot on the left plank there. This is another one that I wouldn't suggest going for in tournament unless you have practiced it a lot because any kind of deviation left or right of this, if you don't hit it perfectly, you're gonna mess it up um, and you could end up in a very bad position. So really do not suggest doing that one um, on hole three if you don't know exactly what you're doing. This one doesn't have a perfect, um, on hole four, this one doesn't have a perfect bounce like where if you hit this area and this area, it'll go towards the hole. You have to get one of those lucky bounces where the wall and the ground meet, um, and then it sends it at a, at a nice little angle. So that's what you're gonna wanna go for when you're doing this one. Here, this one took me a really, really long time. Um, I was not having a good time with this. Most people go kind of in the center, the left side center, and go to the closest spoke to the center. Um, if you hit that rock just right, um, some people have made it in. Uh, I tried that for several hours, probably two, three, probably two, three hours, um, and I just, I just wasn't getting anywhere near really. Um, so I switched it over to the right side to try something new. Um, I felt like I was making progress, and then just kept up going until it made. I wouldn't suggest going for this shot during the during a tournament um, or match play, just because if you end up behind that plank, you're going to be in a real bad position. So just roll it off to the left side on hole six and you'll be okay. Hole seven, this is definitely one you're going for. Just get that left bounce, kind of the center of that board. And I mean, if you don't make the hole in one, you got an easy, easy second putt that you can sink in. Hole eight, you're gonna go for hole eight and hole nine, really regardless during match play. Um, for hole eight here, you're just kind of shooting straight, almost, almost straight into the center of a little shadowy bit of the railing, which you might, you might see here. Um, you'll see in my first shot, yeah, right there, you see a little shadowy bit. And so as long as you get the speed right, that's always gonna end up in this ramp, and then you always have a chance of making it. It's probably going to be a low chance, but it's a chance nonetheless. Nine, you're gonna end up in that exact same scenario where you make it into the little railings. I don't know if you call them railings. Mine shaft thingamabobs. That's a much more technical term, I think. You make it into the mine shaft. shaft blah, 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 blah. You make it into the mine shaft thingamabobs, and you just hope. You just hope. So, Inner Princess, you'll see um, theirs actually bounces off the left side. Mine just rolls straight up there. I'm, I'm actually surprised that it didn't roll further over to the left. I'm very happy it didn't. I have to say, um, but. It is just, it's just really a waiting game for this one. So go for this anyway in tournament. Um, some people actually like hitting on, which one is it? I think it's the, the easiest one to get in actually. Um, 
but I, I would really suggest learning this one just because I think it's worth it. It gives you a, a very easy second shot. Um, and as long as you're kind of focused and paying attention in match play, um, you will, you'll make it into this little mine shaft thingamabob, as the miners call it. The next several, not the next several, but several of the next few are ones that took longer than I really expected them to take. This one, for instance, you know, you'd think this one's just kind of like, just wail on, it'll eventually get down there. But with the way that it's curved, getting to that center of the green is really difficult that far down. Some people just kind of wail on it and hope that it bounces off of the rock. Um, I tried that for a bit and just really wasn't getting anywhere. You're basically just counting on chaos, which I, I did for a lot. Here, you can just go for that second plank um, right past where you're going. Honestly, I think on both sides uh, of there, and you'll get over the the plank there. Um, just If you're in match, I would say don't hit it too hard because you don't want to end up in the rocks in the back. I went for a dunk here just because I thought it would be cool for the video, um, but if you're in match play, just stay behind that plank. Um, hit it in front of that plank and it'll bounce over the plank, bounce off the wall, and if you don't make it all in one, you will um, have a very easy second shot. Hole 12, man. You'll notice right here, so I go back and then I hear a sound. I hear it hit the green. I thought it just gone off. Um, and I have been, I had been working on this hole for a long time. This one probably took five, six hours, um, before I finally made it. It's probably the third, actually no, this one was probably closer to seven or eight. This is, this is probably the third longest, third or fourth longest one that I spent time on. Um, and you just don't feel really in control. Really what you're going for is a bounce either off of the rock to the right of where you're hitting. Um, or off of one of those little, the cracked areas that I hit off in this case, um, on, on the plank and you're just, you're just hoping to exit and, and hope it goes in. Uh, you're really hoping for chaos and, uh, sometimes you don't get it. Sometimes you'll get it. This case is one where I got very lucky actually. Um, I was going for a bounce. So the, the bar that I'm hitting off of, it's a, it's a bit persnickety. Um, it will either pop up your ball um, or it'll allow like just be like a basic swing like like what you would expect to happen I was going for the pop-up but for whatever reason it gave me it didn't give me a pop-up and it ended up being the perfect speed uh, to dunk it so very useful here this one's not too bad it, it is harder than you think it is but you look at that and you're like oh that's a little mound right there it has a bit of a kick to it you can see I kind of kicked over it um, and so just going off the very l right, I guess, if you're facing it, right edge of that, um, left, I don't know what I call it. Just column. Yeah. Just the column. Uh, you'll be fine. This one took a while too. This one, if you hit it right, you'll always get very close, but you'll never, it's so difficult to get the hole in one because you have to be the perfect speed to do it. And so, I, like, I, I mean, I spent, I, I think I spent probably four hours on this one um, before it finally went in, which was surprising because I definitely came into this hole thinking, dang, this will be easy. You just aim right there to the right of that chair. Um, most of the time, if you hit center, you're going to end up really close to that hole. So you're going to want to go for this one in tournament. Just right there to the right of that chair. Hit it with a nice medium hard speed. You have a second easy putt. Maybe even hold in one. This one, whenever I started playing this game, I was always going to the right, and I don't know why, until I saw someone hit to the left, and I was like, that's so obvious. But yeah, this is one you should definitely be going for. The problem with going for it too hard is always the concern you hit it too fast and go off or get stuck behind a gold bar. So just hit it nice and slow, guarantee yourself that second hit. This one does not always end up in a hole-in-one, but usually it does. It'll just dump you out right there, send you in. Um, a lot harder than you think, honestly. I. I actually had to do this a couple times before I got it. The fact that people pull it off in tournaments is, is fairly impressive. Luckily, even if you miss and you hit him, you can still kind of connive a nice little, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You measure angles with it. Protractor, there we go. You can kind of protract your way around um, and potentially send it in on your second shot just because it's, it's in a nice little cubby. This one, I was surprised that this one was, e was as easy as it was. Um, you still have to aim on the very right side there. You want to hit basically just like the just like a little bit of that that jutting out wood, um, and it'll it'll send you with enough speed and direction that um, you'll you'll be able to make it in. 
And if not, again, same thing. You'll be left with a nice easy shot. Because this one's definitely uh, not an easy hole for the average person. Um, like myself. Look at that. Look at the, that's the money shot. Beautiful. And there's bogeys. All right, from the Cowboys to Fighting Windmills, this is the final hole. No, not the final hole, the final the final course uh, of this hole-in-one challenge that I, was, I put myself through. So after an update, there was a slight change in how this rolled. Most people were going off of the plow there, um, like kind of dead center, but that is not as reliable for a hole-in-one as it once was. And so what I did is you kind of wanted to hang on the very edge of the plow and allowed it to catch the angle of the grass to go up. Um, this one I found that for hole two, you want to kind of go up into the area where the, the dirt's showing because it's going to give you the extra speed. Because if you just come off the, speed, the grass below the dirt, you're not going to have enough speed to reach the hole usually. So this one's very interesting um, for match play because if you just hit the ball down there, it is, it's fairly easy to time the windmill fans um, how you want. But having them bounce off of something definitely makes the timing a little more difficult. But it's the only way to really get the angle that you want to get for the hole in one. So either you hit it down there with a straight shot to guarantee a birdie or not, I actually don't, I'm assuming it's part three. A birdie, a second shot. Um, but if you wanna go for the hole in one, you feel like that's something that's necessary. Absolutely um, go for that. Just be sure to time out the fan a bit longer. This one, I got, I think I got pretty lucky with this. Um, because it, I, I've heard stories of this taking forever for people. Um, I, I got it within like 10, 20 minutes, um, which I'm, I'm, very, I'm very thankful for, um, spending all the time. So there, it has that board has that little left edge there. Um, that allows you to bounce off. And so you, you just got to gotta time it where you just get up. It's about to come back down the board, but it hits that edge, launches off, uh, and then you hope for the best. This, one's, this one is very possible in tournament play, and I would say this is one of those ones, if you're in an advanced tournament, you're going to want to do this. Um, but it is, very, it's, it is very tight timing. Um, so that wall perfectly, kind of perfectly leads to that hole. You just got to time it right when those two fans are, are perfectly spaced away. So lots of practice on that, but worth it. This one is not one. You, <laughs> hole six is not one that you'll be doing in tournament, I assume. Um, it is a nice way. You can get pretty close to the hole um, fairly consistently, but not more consistent than just going the correct way. So you just got to hit off kind of that left side stone and you're golden. This is, this is one of those ones you're going to do this anyway. This is like all those ramp ones. You're going to do this anyway. This is exactly how you're going to play the ball. Sometimes it's going to end up in your favor. You're just going to go right in. Honestly, I think I, I've played, I've probably played this whole six times or so like in, in matches. And I've seen a hole in one, like one out of five times. So you actually have a pretty decent chance getting a hole in one. As long as you just kind of follow, make sure you hit on the left side of the ramp at the top. So you have enough speed to roll down the second one. Coming up on hole eight is a very, very difficult hole. I had a lot of trouble with it. Um, the way most people do it is they will hit onto the fin, kind of either um, hitting off the left side to slow themselves down or put themselves at a random angle. Um, but I just couldn't get it. I worked on it for probably two, two or three hours. Um, and just, you can see my excitement there. Uh, so I just started going for this random bounce uh, that I think maybe Jin, I think maybe Joey did the bounce. I, I think I want to I want to say that I got the bounce from somebody, but they did it very differently than me. I actually got a bounce off the bottom of the fin um, and got very lucky. But I had so many close calls on that before this um, that one sank that it was it was a real devastating hole because I would get close but always felt like I was so far away. This one is not what you would want to do. Um, you want to go for that same thing where you hit it off and you kind of hit the wall first of the fin, but you want to do it much later and much further down the fin if you are in a match. Because as you can see, I actually hit the rocks down there, which just you know caused 
chaos to ensue. Um, and then I got really lucky and it bounced perfectly on a post towards the hole. So don't go, don't go where I went. Go a little further down and you'll be much better. This one, easy peasy. I'm sure some people here have gotten a, gotten a hole in one on this. A very nice um, shot. Just a little bit to the right there so the wind can take it. And then uh, don't put too much speed on it so the wind is the real power point. Um, so then an Excel word, you know? This one is again, one that I did a bit off the books, not on purpose, but on accident. Most people are really going for kind of the bounce in um, by going for the very center of this wind. I just, I hit it a little slow here. I got a roll off of the, um, the right side and just got a nice little lucky bounce. I think that's actually fairly viable. The only problem with doing that in a match would be if you don't hit it like just right, you could end up, like you can see, I almost ended up um, back on the back on the green um, prior to the fall. So wouldn't wouldn't suggest. Uh, I I think the rock fall here was the rock hit here was very important. Not that I was particularly going for it, um, but I think it gave it just enough power to send a little right than it was. Um, and then set me up for glory. So you can see you fall down. And even then, the concern with falling down is if you don't hit the wall that you're falling off of, you're not going to get propelled to victory. So, a little bit of luck on those, but you can hit that and get an easy second shot. This one is, surprisingly, you can't get a hole-in-one with just, like, the wind mechanics here. So you have to go for a bit of a jump to get up here. This is useful it's a nice shot um but as, if you just learn how the wind works in this game you won't want to hit this in a in match play whatsoever um so right here right up there i think the one that everyone would go for if they're trying to just get up to the green on the first shot you just get up there and you just kind of hope um you go for a bounce off of that left side rock sometimes you get in a good spot most of the time you don't um, either way, you're on that green, you have a very makeable next shot. Uh, there are a couple ways to do 15. Um, you know, my, my, my suggestion is to always just go straight up um, the edge. I don't think you're really going to uh, get much better than that, usually. But some people just kind of send it down the range like I do here. Um, I was actually, usually what I'm going for in that case is to pass by the, the I don't know what that is. I can't, I can't really see it. Uh, that instrument, is that just a shovel? No, it's not a shovel. Anyway, um, and just bounce off of the, uh, the gardening instrument. Uh, I usually go past it uh, and try to bounce off of the stone, but again, just another kind of a little lucky bounce. If you try something a thousand times, something's got to work, right? Here, this was an interesting one. You actually, you do want to go in these. So some people go off to the left on the stairs. It's really cool looking, but it is very hard. Instead, just make it in one of these and just keep doing it because eventually it's just gonna come out of the pipe so that you can get a dunk. I don't know, you call that a dunk, a bounce dunk, an alley-oop? We gotta come up with more terminology, but yeah. Right there and you just, you keep doing that until it makes it in. I think it took about 20 minutes or so for it to go in. This one's interesting because again, I, you know, actually, I think, I wanna say that, um, that virtually Ben landed this without doing kind of the, the twisty turvy shots that I was doing, but uh, Froman does it this way, um, and it seemed like the easiest one. You just go off the right side and get the bounce on that second face, uh, and you get a much more likely chance to uh, actually get in the hole. Otherwise, you end up just like a little over from the hole. Always with a second shot, but not exciting. This one, man. Way to round out the game with a heck of a shot and a very difficult one. I spent so long on this. This is the one that I, I think may have taken longer than Bogey's Bonanza 12. Um, it was just, it took forever. A lot of people just go straight up the line, get caught in between those little stones back there, and it'll, it'll roll back. And I just could not get that for the life of me. So I eventually went with the right side play which is to use the left side to roll down. Man, it was, this one, this one emotionally drained me. Uh, luckily it was near the end of these, um, but heck of a game. Thanks for watching y'all. 
Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate your time and viewership. If you would like to join the community, I host monthly VR tournaments and community nights in my Discord. I would love for you to stop by, say hi, and get involved. On top of that, we are always talking about new news and events in social and casual sport VR. I look forward to seeing you around.